The following podcast is intended only for listeners who are intent on growing the business. Welcome to Innovate Marketing, where we are bringing you interviews with the brands, the influencers, and the nonprofits that are making waves and growing business. We are brought to you by mypodcast.media. Mypodcast.media produces high quality podcasts that authentically connect you to your ideal audience. And now I'd like to introduce you to your host for Innovate Marketing, Sherry Peek. Hello, and welcome to Innovate Marketing. Today, our guest is David Meeker and is the founder of the company Bringing Tech to You. And Dave is a high healthcare cyber consultant. Welcome to the show, David. How are you today? Just fine. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. We are very glad to have you on the show today as we're going to be talking about something that's very relevant to the tech world today. So, Dave, as we get started, can you tell me what a healthcare cyber consultant is? What is your work like? What does that profession entail? Sure. I help develop a circle of trust with top level executives by protecting their cybersecurity and data. And what that mainly means is I'm on the proactive side. I'm working with people and companies to be to think proactively before they have to call in all the troops to get them dehacked and unbugged. Now, we know that 85 percent of businesses that are hacked, they do not survive. That's right. And so this is an area that you're able to step into and help those who might have issues during that time or even preventative measures that they could take to help them make sure that their systems are secure. And that's a percentage or a stat that I didn't just pull out of the air. That came from the actual cybersecurity squad of the state of Indiana on our Homeland Security. And it's not the immediate hit that many people go out of business. It's from all the lawsuits and fines and regulations they've broken that happens over the next two to three years after the hack. So today we're going to spend um, a good amount of our time talking about chat GPT and some of the security concerns around that. So chat GPT is trending right now, but this AI technology isn't new. Can you tell us a little bit about how these programs work? To the best of my knowledge, most of these operate off of what used to be called machine language or it's called artificial intelligence or AI and that scares a lot of people but what it mainly does is assimilates data in this case words and then comes out with some kind of outcome the thing the funny thing is about artificial intelligence it's actually programmed via humans so at this point in time the software is not self-aware as they may say in, in the Terminator movie it's all run by a human eventually but it basically goes out there and scrubs various articles, various texts, and pulls data from that. And then with the programming, comes up with some kind of message. The problem is, is it scrapes a lot of data that may be copyright, copyrighted, it might be private, or it may not even be true. So what are people doing with this technology? In the educational forum, I've heard already from a friend of mine that's in one of the collegiate arenas that many students are taking this and using it to write term papers, theses, whatever you want. And it's actually false that they're, what they're doing. Some people are, uh, are doing it as a podcast menu, for example, or a podcast mantra. And in my opinion, it doesn't have the flow of a real human being. And then hackers or people we call often call them bad actors are taking this artificial intelligence and then using it against machines and networks to get into and create a cyber incident. That's pretty interesting. So we know that there are other AI chat programs out there. Jasper.ai is one. Yes. Why don't we hear much about them? Because right now that one's paid. The one you mentioned is free for right now. Uh, I do know one of my sources said it was made in Iceland and it's all what's called open source. And it means that that means one thing to some people, some to other. But basically, when you get a free product, you are the consumer, but you're also now the user. When you pay for it, there's a fee. Obviously, it at least has an idea that there's still some accountability. 
But as they found out with many apps that people associated with their Facebook accounts many years ago, those apps had not only access to their data, but to their security. Google came out with a new AI program. You haven't heard much about that yet, but Google has a better security for the most part, but time only time will tell. I hope that makes sense. It does make sense. Let's go a little bit further into the marketing aspect of this. How are marketers and the content marketers using this today in their everyday business life or just generating content uh, for the future? How do you see them specifically using this tool? I see a lot of people trying to automate the content, but most of the algorithms on social media automatically look for that automation and quite often rank you towards the bottom instead of the top. You may have saved time and generated it and used these automated programs to schedule it and create it, but at the end of the day, most of the algorithms will detect that it's automated, it's not genuine, it's not real, and your ranking falls down to the bottom instead of the top. You feel warm and fuzzy, but it doesn't have the results. What about the intersection between marketing and the security concerns? Because we know that, um, as you mentioned before, there are security concerns in using platforms such as ChatGPT. Yes. When Zoom came back out with the pandemic, the FBI actually warned against using it. It was very insecure. They've made it more secure now. I, I called Apple Care, for example. Apple has a very secure platform. In 2016, the military switched from a non-iPhone application or a Droid to an Apple. They switched to that. I called Apple Care and said, "What do I need any antivirus with my iPhone?" They said, "No, everything is included with the iPhone." I says, "Well, how do you feel about third-party applications?" We do not recommend any third-party applications. Period. What does that tell you? That means technically the less apps you have on the phone, the more secure you are. <laughs> you know, I, th I thought it was kind of interesting knowing that you were going to be our guest today. And when I got on social media today, this is one of the first posts that I seen about. It was about AI and the Super Bowl and how it was used. So it's not just being used on a small scale marketing level, but even on a grander scale as well, as we've seen with that. Um, let's talk about, you know, their security current security concerns um, with the marketing um, content marketers. But for everyday people, what are some of the security concerns for the average person that you can see? Yes. And what I try to do is I try to help businesses uh, and everyday people in their home life understand what the risks are, because it's called cyber hygiene, just like you brush your teeth and you wash your face in the morning. You'd, same thing with the cybersecurity or just plain old good of passwords and password protections. If you don't take your bad habits can carry over into the workplace. What does that mean? Everybody and their brother with their appliances now want to take your appliance and hook it up to your home network. Well, without going into the details, you, without having two separate networks, you have the risk of having your Internet of Things or IoT, as they call it, washer, dryers, all that stuff impact and maybe get hacked and then hack your network. What does that mean? It can hack your mobile device or your laptop, whichever you have connected to the network, bing, it goes down from there. But more importantly, it's children that are the real mm -hmm. targets here. And they don't understand that if the parents don't understand the, the basic security and basic uh, privacy protection, their kids are targets on the internet, especially until YouTube made their changes on commenting. But it's it's very, that's a whole nother topic. Interesting. Very interesting. So I heard you mention the U.S. government prior conversation we were having. Um, I've heard that the U.S. government doesn't allow employees to use it. Yes. Why is that? Well, that should be a red flag right there. When you see that, and, and all the conspiracy things aside, I belong to what's called InfraGuard, which is the civilian uh, part of this uh, FBI cyber squad. And I get the facts all throughout the elections and all that the rigmarole they went through. I just went by the facts. And when the government tells you that they, they only want you to use your phone or their phone, excuse me, with their network or their security protocol with their network, and you have to go through all these things to, to make sure you get into the network. Well, as I say to small business owners, sure, See, uh, cyber hygiene can be a pain in the butt, 
But would you rather just be out of business? Because that's also a pain. So and as we're looking at this technology and, and it's becoming more familiar, not just with uh, marketing, content marketers, but everyday families, you mentioned children um, are a, a target, a real target with all of this. Yes. What should we be careful about when we choose to use it? Are there safeguards that could be put in place yes. while we're using it? And if so, what does that look like? I would say that as the rule in our house was if you're under 18 and I'm paying for your phone or paying for your internet, <laughs> uh, I am the parent, I own the bill, I have the responsibility. There are safeguards in place, but more importantly, it's just like when my kids acted out, they could I got gave them a look and they knew, whoop, I need to do that. You start that and the same thing with anything electronic. In many cases, I have one daughter that doesn't even let their kids get on the internet until they're a certain age. And that's probably not a bad idea. The problem is, is the new latest, greatest things from a calculator that's actually an icon for a bullying app that you don't know about until you uh, go to some of these bullying places or some of these other sneaky things. They have the real Instagram account and then they have the one for the parents to look at. They think they're being sneaky as teenagers, but they're actually being targets. So what's it's that hard decision of starting earlier. No means no. Same thing with the uh, internet and phones. I, I would go with this carrier like Verizon that's actually secure and has some parental controls in it. Very interesting there. And I know like sometimes parents are just clueless, you know, about some of the new technology that that is out there. So I love that you brought that point to the forefront because not only are adults using this, but children also have access to it as well. We've talked about uh, our focus um, has been pretty much on the safety concerns and things that we should be worried about. Um, but how should we treat this until the bugs are worked out or will they be worked out? Basically, you can only protect yourself against the next thing because technology is changing so fast every day, every hour, every second. It's almost impossible to, to keep up with it. So when I got hacked tw once in 2014 and 2015, I, I made a, I actually cried in the IT department's uh, business because I, I, I lost control. I would raise the white flag and surrendered and say, I am now going to have to pay someone to take care of my security and malware. And that's the thing, the pain point. It's no longer a kid in someone's basement next door hacking into your system. It's someone international. They don't rob banks in person anymore. They rob them electronically. The same thing with your privacy, your security, your dignity, and your kids' safeties is all robbed over, the, over some kind of connection. And the problem is, where is that connection and why don't I know about it? And this is exactly where your company can come in handy, right? Yes. And it's just not me. I, I have a bunch of, of other people that will provide what's called a SOC or SOC, a secure operating center that monitors the incoming and outgoing traffic for a business 24 seven. And you can't do that yourself. You just have to say, I need help. Who do I contact? And I help those people align with those vendors that I've vetted. So, Dave, as we wrap up our conversation, what would be your final thoughts or one tip that you would leave with our listening audience today as we continue to explore how we stay si safe in a cyber world? Just like when you're 16 and you're going for your driver's test and you actually check your mirrors, check your seat position and all these things in your car before you pull out into traffic. The same thing with cyber security and Internet awareness. It's to be aware be careful and be informed and trust the data. Don't don't go to the conspiracy therapies. Trust the data and trust your circle of influence that people that know about this stuff. For those, Dave, that would like to connect with you beyond our time here today to learn more about the services that you offer or even how to further protect themselves in cyber world, how can they reach you? You can go to bringingtechtoyou.com and that's T-E-C-H, the number two, Y-O-U.com. Or you can Google my hashtag, hashtag bringingtechtoyou.com from a browser anywhere in the world and my content will come up. Okay, Dave. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule today 
to be with us and share this very useful information. We really appreciate you joining us today. You're all more than welcome. Now, friends, that's all that we have for you today. So until we chat again, stay safe and be great. That brings us to the close of this edition of Innovate Marketing. We're glad you tuned in. Innovate Marketing is brought to you by MyPodcast.media. MyPodcast.media produces podcasts for brands, influencers, and nonprofits. Find us online at MyPodcast.media. Your producer for Innovate Marketing is Beth Freed. Executive producer, Sean Neal. And your host is Sherry Peak. We'll see you next time. Be sure to tune in.